Okay, so in this video, we will solve the following problem. That is, we need to find a function f and a constant a such that the following equation is satisfied. So we have an obvious problem here looking at this equation. We cannot perform the integration because we don't know what the function f is. So in attempting to solve for f, well, this means freeing f from the integral. So we have to find a way to cancel the integral. Well, the inverse process of integration is differentiation. So both sides are functions of x. So we will simply differentiate both sides with respect to x. This will eliminate the integral and allow us to solve for f. Once we know what f is, we can perform the integration and then we will be able to solve for a. Now, remember when we have to differentiate an integral of the type a definite integral, the way to make this as simple as possible is simply to rewrite the integral using the fundamental theorem of calculus, writing the integral as a difference of antiderivatives. So, by the fundamental theorem of calculus, the definite integral is simply f of x squared minus f of it. And again, uppercase f is not any function. Uppercase f is an antiderivative of the function being integrated, which means the derivative of uppercase f at t since the function that we are integrating here is with respect to t. And so again, f being an antiderivative of the function being integrated is a fancy way of saying the derivative of uppercase f is this function. Now let's rewrite the equality using the fundamental theorem of calculus. So the equality becomes 4 plus f of x squared minus f of 8 is equal to 8 ln of x. And now, as we've just said before, to eliminate the integral, we simply take the derivative of both sides with respect to x, as both sides are functions of x. So the derivative of the left with respect to x will equal the derivative of the right with respect to x. Well, the derivative of 4 is 0. We have a constant plus the derivative of f of x squared. So we apply the chain rule. So the derivative of f but then times the derivative of the argument, 2x, minus the derivative of f of a. Well, since a is a constant, f of a is a constant, so the derivative with respect to x is 0. And this will equal the derivative of 8 ln of x, which is simply 8 over x. Well, we don't know what uppercase f is, but we sure know what uppercase f prime is, it is t the square of f of t. So we can now replace, right? This is true for all values of t. Now we are simply evaluating f prime instead of t at x squared. So let's replace in here t by x squared. So on the left we will get x squared. f of x squared squared. times 2x is equal to 8 over x. Well, we can isolate this term. So we have here 2x cubed, right? We can divide across. So we will have here 8 over 2 is 4. Now uh, we send x cubed on the denominator times x is x4. Uh, oops, let 
getting ahead of myself. Well, we want to undo the square here, so we take the square root on both sides. Remember there are two solutions, right? The positive and the negative square root. If we apply the root on each term, top and bottom, we get 2. The root of x4 is, of course, x squared. And you can see where my mind was when I wrote x squared here. I was getting ahead of myself. So there are two possible answers for f of x squared. It could be the positive or the negative solution. And we don't quite have f of x, but we have f of x squared. But notice that to go from f of x squared to f of x, we simply have to make the substitution of replacing x squared by x, since x squared is a variable. So if f of x squared is plus or minus 2 over the same argument, x squared, then f of x will be plus or minus 2 over x. So there are actually two possible answers for f. f could either be 2 over x or the negative of 2 over x. And now that we know what f is, lowercase f, we can replace in the original integral, simplify, perform the integration, and we will then be able to solve for a. So let's do that. Again, replacing here f of t by plus or minus 2 over x, replacing x by t. And notice that we have the square, and so whether we take the positive or the negative of f, we get the same answer squared. This is simply 4 over t squared. And now let's make the substitution. So we get 4 plus the integral from a to x squared of t times the square of f of t, which is 4 over t squared dt. And this is equal to 8 ln of x. Well, we can simplify here, right? So this is uh, simply 4 over t. Before we equate this to 8 ln of x, let's perform the integration. So again, we use here the fundamental theorem of calculus. We need a function whose derivative is 1 over t. This is, of course, the ln of t in absolute value, so we have the antiderivative. And we must now, by the fundamental theorem of calculus, evaluate the antiderivative from a to x squared. So we will get 4 plus the antiderivative at x squared for the ln of x squared in absolute value. Now we can drop the absolute value since x squared is positive. And again, recall by assumption, x was assumed to be also positive. So here we don't need the absolute value. Minus 4, the ln t replaced by a. Now we, here we need to keep the absolute value because we don't know whether a is a positive or a negative real number. And this of course is equal to 8 ln of x. Now you might wonder, how do we solve for a here, since there seems to be another variable, namely x. But we can use a basic property of logarithms to simplify, and we will see that x actually cancels out. Right? We can 
bring the 2 up front as a constant multiple, this side will become 4 plus, well, 2 times 4, 8 ln of x. Minus 4, the ln of 8 in absolute value. Equals 8 ln of x. The 8 ln of x now cancels. So we get 4. Continue on another page. So let's rewrite what we have so far. Again, the 8 ln of x is cancelled. So we will get 4 minus 4 ln of a in absolute value is equal to 0. And now we can easily solve for this equation. So we can factor 4. If you divide across by 4, 0 over 4 is 0. So we have 1 minus ln of a in absolute value is equal to 0. We can send the ln of a here, and so we will get ln of a in absolute value equals 1. Let me write it backwards. So the ln of a in absolute value is equal to 1. To cancel the ln, we take the exponential base e on both sides, since e to the x is the inverse of ln of x. So e cancels the ln. We have a in absolute value is equal to e. We can remove the absolute value. And we have, again, two solutions. Either a is the positive of e or the negative of e. And this completes the solution. So we have two possible answers for a and two possible answers for f. So if we write the conclusion here, a is either plus or minus e. And if you recall, f of x was plus or minus 2 over x. And we've now solved the problem. And if you go back, just to emphasize the crux of the solution, fundamentally, all that we said was, to solve for f, we have to eliminate the integral, since we cannot integrate unless we know f. And if you ever want to eliminate an integral, of course, this is done by differentiating, since the integral is the inverse of the derivative. And to make the problem of differentiating an integral much simpler, you simply have to rewrite the integral as a difference of antiderivative using the fundamental theorem of calculus. Once you apply FTC, then you recover essentially a differential calculus problem. Once we know the function, we can replace it in the integral, perform the integration, and a little bit of algebra allowed us to solve for a. And that's it.